Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the pixellab.net. This is Jordan Condell. Today I have a quick tip for uh, dealing with dynamics. So dynamics are really easy to set up, but sometimes it's pretty hard to control them. So I'm gonna show you a technique that I've used quite a few times in the past. And also wanna give a shout out to Dave Glanz, who also showed this technique in the NAB presentations uh, this year. So make sure to go back and check those out. Uh, but I was reminded of this technique yesterday on Twitter. A guy was trying to figure out a solution for a stack of magazines that were falling dynamically and he wanted them to stack up on top of each other. But they kept sliding off and kind of being unpredictable and um, it's definitely kind of a pain in the butt dealing with dynamics and trying to tweak them to get the right uh, settings. So uh, basically this situation where we have these coins or poker chips and we want them to stack up uh, as they fall kind of building a stack, right? But when we set up dynamics by default, this uh, kind of happens. So they bounce and they sort of slide off of each other and uh, they're not building into a stack, which is kind of frustrating. So you can definitely play around with your dynamic settings, your linear dampening and all that kind of stuff to get these things to stack up. but um, I found this technique is a really good place to start and it's usually a very simple way of solving a problem. So let's go ahead and build a cylinder. And basically what this cylinder is going to be is an invisible cage to sort of uh, corral all of our clones into the place that we want them to be. So make our cylinder a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and take the caps off of this cylinder, turn the caps off. So this is sort of the cage forcing them to where we want them to be. So let's go ahead and turn this off with the two stopwatches. Now a thing to note is do not turn this green check mark off because then it's going to ignore this cylinder. This needs to be on. So let's go ahead and hit play and you'll realize that nothing has changed. That's because this is not a dynamic object right now. We need to right click, go to uh, simulation tags and rigid body. And by default, it's going to go nuts, right? Because it's kind of just exploding all of this stuff. Um, and that is because of the shape. Right now, it's set to automatic. We actually want this to be static mesh because it's static. It's not moving. So let's put static mesh. And now you're going to see we're kind of getting the result that we want. And it's a little bit janky right now, um, but you can see that it's sort of corralling these clones into place. And now all we have to do is go into our, our cylinder and just play around with the radius of that guy. We can make it maybe a little bit smaller, and then you can see that we're getting a really nice result. And if you want this to slow down a little bit more, you can play in your dynamic settings with some of these uh, forces like linear dampening and angular dampening. But already you're getting the picture that uh, this cylinder, this cage around these clones is basically uh, corralling them and forcing them to stay in a stack. And if you play around with the, the size of the cylinder, you can get it to look pretty realistic. Uh, so yeah, I find myself using this technique quite a bit when I'm having falling uh, things falling with dynamics and it really helps uh, give you a lot more control over them. So if you have falling poker chips or falling magazines or a stack of books, uh, anything like that, um, this would be a great technique to play around with and might just save you a lot of time. So I hope that helps you guys. I hope you learned something. Thanks for checking out thepixellab.net and we'll talk again next time. Bye everybody.